last few days for Kansas State fans have been tough. I think that might be a bit underselling what they have been going through. And every fan base goes through things like this. When it rains, it pours. And for Kansas State, that's losing Optimus Klein as OC going off to Texas A&M. All the rumors about who might be going with him from regards to coaches and players. And then what's going on with the basketball team and now the entire university itself because of a spat between Jerome Tang and the university president. So there's it's too much for me to try to break down. I mentioned this on the 1012 podcast, the Thursday episode. It was We just ran out of time. And so best way to handle this, I thought, was to get our friend Scott of Bosco's Boys come on we'll do a little video interview and try and break down all of this as as it continues to develop this video will be good and i'm sure 24 hours from now something else will have either happened as a positive or a negative to change all of it but it's at least worth touching on while it's going on so scott welcome sure yeah thank you very much happy to be on always happy to come on and uh i wish it was you know talking about how great you know, Jerome Tang is at overtime games. Talk about, is this a world record? Three straight overtime games and three straight overtime wins. Um, You know, I, I wish I was calling the Guinness Book of World Records, but alas, we're not, so. I mean, it is an interesting strategy if, if you know, look, we know if we get to overtime, we'll win. So we're just going to get to overtime in every game this season and we'll go undefeated. So it's it's an interesting strategy, but it's it's a winning one so far for them. Yeah, I, I kind of was joking around with some of the folks I was sitting with on Tuesday as the game was getting tight late, and uh, one of my friends said, I'm just going to rush the court if we go to overtime because we know we're going to win. And, and funny enough, uh, it, it went down to the wire, and it wasn't looking like it was going to work out like that. But there's something in Tyler Perry's DNA when uh, y- you need a game winner, he, he's going to take the shot, and it's going to go in. So I'm not complaining about winning games, but sadly, uh, that's all being overshadowed. It, it is time to start the how many overtimes has a team won in one season or played in in one season tracker for Kansas State. We'll see how far we go with that. At some point, things have to end the regulation. But well, let's start with basketball. We'll, we'll get to football in a minute. Let's start with basketball since you brought up Tang. Um, the latest news um, from Wednesday, I don't know what day it is. The, the week has gotten away with me for me, is, is that the, the – I'm not going to say the drama has come to an end in relation to the program, um, but Kansas State's athletic director did put out a statement uh, in regards to, uh, and I'm just blanking. I, it's, it's trying to Nick do this Wontom. on, on thank you. No, you're fine. Oh, First off, you do things. such a great, you do such a great job, and I don't, I don't know if folks who listen to your show or watch your watch your YouTube understand this. Not only do you have your own team that you cheer for, not only are you also in a different state and kind of by default following a, a certain SEC team that their fans scare me, um, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about that. Uh, they all have rabies. I don't know how you're existing in that state, but whatever. Um, but you also keep tabs on the current 14 teams in the Big 12 and the four that are incoming. So you get a pass, my friend. <clears throat> what you're able to do is second to me. <laughs> this is why I have a network of, of podcasts so that I don't have to do all the heavy lifting. I, I, ex- I expect everyone to just carry it. Together we will build the pyramid, but I'm not doing it all on my own. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Nyquan Tomlin has been dismissed from the team after a uh, – being indefinitely suspended for most of the season during coming from an event that occurred in October. Um, there's a lot going on with this that involved Jerome Tang and how his group is handling it. Um, the athletic director, the university president and questions about his level of involvement. Kind of walk us through how we got to this point that has turned frankly an entire fan base in, against the university president Linton. Yeah, so so first I'm going to level set because I, I've tried my best on my show, on Twitter, um, online, to try my best to speak because nothing is known for a 100% fact. No. I'm going to try to speak only to the stuff that I'm very confident in because part of the reason why we're here at this point is because no one knows anything for – a fact. No one has the entire story because quite frankly, I was told um, yesterday, late yesterday, that while the the publicized event that happened outside of a bar in Aggieville, um, 
everyone knows about that. There's a public police report. There was something that happened sometime in the summer or early fall that led to his suspension away from the team. He was not part of team events at NIL functions. He was not part of team charity events um, through the early fall. He was not practicing. He was not part of the secret scrimmage. Um, and that was all kept under wraps. To this day, day, I have literally no clue what that is. And I think a lot of folks don't even realize it because th the average fan on Twitter is not uh, going to the $10,000 ahead NIL golf tournament where the entire basketball teams there, except for Naquan Tomlin, the average fan is not scouring the box scores of secret scrimmages and they're not living on message boards. They're not dissecting every single Instagram and Twitter post. Um, so he, he was away from the team. There was some sort of incident and, and I've been told that was the big incident. What happened uh, in October was some sort of altercation with bouncers at a at a bar. Um, I feel confident enough in this piece of it saying, hey, the reason why video hasn't gotten out, the re reason why he was able to now get a diversion. So again, legally, Naquan Tomlin is, is you know, he, he's done everything correct. It's He's getting a diversion. It's coming off of his record. It sounds like maybe the bouncers were the instigators of what caused the incident to get physical uh, in October. Now, there are also tons of rumors surrounding what happened while the altercation was going. I don't feel confident enough saying anything more uh, than an altercation took place. There's a lot of things at hand. I've not seen a great version of the video. I don't feel confident enough saying what all happened there, but that was a second incident. From that second incident that was public, there was no way to keep this one under wraps. That's when the indefinite suspension was announced to the public. From that on, everything gets into shadow campaigns. And this is where my frustration is at its highest. Um, you have a million different stories coming out from every single direction. And K-State fans don't know any of the truth. Um, and I, I do think it is very easy to get behind a beloved basketball coach and a beloved player. Um, and, and that is the easiest thing to believe. I'll, I'll say this right here. President Richard Linton very well could be a total rogue agent doing something that people in his administration don't agree with what Gene Taylor doesn't agree with, Jerome Tang doesn't agree with, and quite frankly, he could be wrong. That all could be true. And at the same time, he could be doing the correct thing, but because of different laws surrounding privacy, they can't say what's going on. I think that's where the frustration comes with K-State fans. Uh, none of us know the situation, uh, and, and the easiest thing to do is to back your team, back your coach, back your player, which 100% could be the correct decision. I just don't know enough and I'm trying to be a mature adult and not be grandiose and go back to my old college burn it down ways uh, like I was uh, back when I was 18. Uh, so, so that's why I'm trying my best to stay in the middle of all this until I ever, if I ever find out what's truly going on. But what that has led to and what is scary um, because it, it has been well reported. Uh, the, the two people who cover K-State sports the best have publicly said uh, and that's Derek Young at K-State online uh, on three and Tim Fitzgerald uh, at 247 Tim Fitzgerald went on Kansas City Sports Talk and he's alluded to it on uh, Twitter I don't think Derek has been as blunt about it but he he sure has kind of made reference um, of the rift between Jerome Tang and uh, President Linton and at least with Tim Fitzgerald he, he is he is at least referring to or making folks believe like, Hey, drum tang might be leaving um, over this in the spring. And that's the scary part. That is the scary part. If that is truly what it comes to, if there is such a breakdown between university leadership and the basketball coach, um, I don't think you can come back from that. And does that mean he's automatically going to leave? I don't know. Um, but it does make me very, I mean, it doesn't make me confident that Jerome Tang's going to have a long tenure at K-State. So that's where things are. I, I know folks listening are probably like, wow, he didn't say anything. 
Um, but again, due to the nature of everything, so many different rumors, I don't want to come on here and say, I know something when I don't know it for a fact. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's hammer the facts real quick, just to kind of keep everyone up to base. Um, Nikon, uh, Nikon Tomlin removed from the team officially on Wednesday. Uh, he was indefinitely suspended in October. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that came after the, the incident you mentioned. Uh, he was arrested at a Manhattan sports bar uh, for, quote, disorderly conduct, brawling, or fighting, according to a Riley County Police Department arrest report. Uh, in the statement, uh, I can't say the athletic writer put out on Wednesday, it said situations like these are difficult. Uh, he basically said that they, they couldn't share more information about it because of, quote, federal privacy laws. Of course, everyone just assumes that they're trying to cover something up because that's obviously what they're doing. Uh, Noted that laws are designed to protect student athletes, and this case specifically to protect Tomlin, quote, as he is working through a process designed to support him and lift him out of a difficult time. Uh, also noted, uh, made a comment about the, the spread of rumors and its information in this case. It definitely feels like here's what happens in every situation. And this I feel confident saying is fact. When the when when a situation is going on and there are not facts that are readily available to us. Someone's going to fill in that gap, be it the general public, be it the media, or be it someone connected to it who wants to make sure that the story has come at that from a specific angle. Obviously, the university itself, the athletic department, the school is not going to release information and they're going to cite federal privacy laws. And you can say that that's for fans who are like, no, this is you're just trying to cover up. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you're just mad because you aren't happy with the situation and you demand information that you don't have a right to. Like I understand as fans that we believe we deserve to have any and all insight into everything that's going on so that we can we can know how to feel. Because that's obvious, honestly, what the problem often comes down to is we don't know how we're supposed to feel about this. We don't know what we're supposed to direct our blame and anger, and we have no one to. And so until someone gives us someone, a source to point that frustration at, we're very upset. And once we have a person in mind, and at this point it is President Linton. So the question becomes. I'm curious from your perspective, how is it that President Linton is the one who Kansas State's fan base has, how has he become the target of their frustration and anger and and, and very understandable emotion? Yeah, so I, I think the first part of it is um, he is the new guy. He, he He's only been around for a little bit and uh, K State fans, and, and it took them a while. They came around to absolutely love G- Gene Taylor. Um, it didn't take a while. It took two seconds into his press conference, and K State fans loved Jerome Tang. And Naquan Tomlin has charisma. He's a good basketball player, and he has an amazing personality. He he is the easiest target to blame. Now, I think there is enough evidence. Uh, for all this. I I think there is enough trusted reporting. I think there is enough trusted sourcing out there if you're in the weeds of this thing that uh, President Linton does seem to be on an island with this. I think, again, if you go to trusted reporters, if you go to uh, folks who who have earned credibility in covering K-State sports, when the statement came out, there was a lot of okay, Gene Taylor's the one who's having to put his name on it. This was not a Gene Taylor decision. So I'm choosing to believe those trusted um, and sourced reporters. So it comes back to this was a a decision that President Linton was making that well-sourced folks are saying Gene Taylor was not agreeing with and Jerome Tang was not agreeing with. So when there is a minority who gets to make the decision, it becomes very easy to choose that person to point the fingers to. So I I think that is the reason. So um, that that does take a lot of leaps now. So you you are having to trust uh, reporters. You're having to trust folks who are well-sourced, folks who are close to athletics and uh, the basketball program that they are getting the correct information and you are having to trust that there is no alternative motives. And you are having to then again, not trust Gene Taylor and him putting his name on that statement. Um, Where I fall on all that. I, I, I do think that there, whether it is black and white or just dark gray, 
I think there is a level to uh, President Linton uh, in the university side of this was making a decision that uh, Gene Taylor was not completely on board with, did not completely agree with, and 100% Jerome Tang did not agree with. So I do think there is, uh, there are three parties in this situation, and I, I do think that the university side of this was not agreeing with athletics or basketball. Yeah, that definitely seems like it. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I have a strong enough opinion on on this because there's not enough information, and it's no, not it, from it, a lack of respect from the people who are reporting what they're reporting. But in situations like this, you're going to side with the side that you feel a closer connection to and feel that you have the ear of. And so like, I, I'm, I'm, I'll hold my thoughts as I just don't feel confident in them at the moment. No. Um, and, and I will say, I I've tried to do the same. I, I just, uh, I, I think regardless of what the ultimate and, uh, you know, definitive truth is to all of this, I think the lesson for all three arms of this, the university, the athletic department and the basketball program have learned that there are no winners in a situation in which you are actively trying to keep stuff out of the public eye. And, and I, and if there are privacy stuff, if there are law, I, I, I get that. I, some folks have said, Scott, there are federal laws, there are university laws, there's NCAA laws. They can't tell you, I'm not asking for everything. There was active. I, I don't like saying cover up because that, that, that has bad count connotations, but they were trying to keep things as quiet as possible um, for a very long time. And when you do that and you lack transparency, and when you're asked questions about it and you give nothing, you just pass the buck. This is what happens. And the rumors and everything that shadows the truth dwarfs what the truth is. I think the worst rumors of what happened, uh, any incident that Naquan Tomlin was involved in, the worst rumors are, are probably the majority of the rumors are worse than probably whatever happened. I think whatever the rumors are engulfing President Linton are worse than whatever actually happened. I think whatever rumors surrounding Jerome Tang and Gene Taylor, and, and very few are actually around that. But I think that dwarfs whatever actually happened. So now we are dealing with a 300-foot ogre when this might have just been a scary looking duck, but that's the situation we're in. Um, and there's no going back at this point. There is no way to fix anything because even if all the information uh, came out, like even if we did get a, you know, a, a 100 page report giving us all the facts and information, and I doubt there's even enough stuff for a hundred pages uh, opinions are done Um Rifts have been made, and, and I don't know if, if things can be fixed, um, which regardless of who is right, who is wrong, that is not a situation you want uh, your athletic department, a big three revenue sport, and the university to have. Um, so we're all going to be losers in this situation. So this all comes at the same time as Kansas State fans are, I mean, frankly, mourning the loss of, of Colin Klein, offensive coordinator formerly known as the <clears throat> Optimus Klein, <clears throat> who terrorized the Big 12 as a quarterback, pardon me, uh, and then uh, kind of terrorized the Big 12 as an offensive coordinator for the past two years uh, at Kansas State. He is off to Texas A&M. He has turned down jobs from Notre Dame and Penn State. Those are the only ones we know. There's no, I mean, at this point, I would I would assume there's probably been at least a couple other schools that have reached out with interest. He will now be the offensive coordinator at, at Texas A&M. Since that, we there are rumors that and concerns of what other offensive coaches might follow him. Might he bring along with him? Could that impact per current players on the roster? Could they up and transfer with the guy who recruited them heavily? Could other commits do the same thing? Avery Johnson is a name that's been kind of floating out there that Kansas State fans are concerned about, which is obvious since he's about the only quarterback left on the roster at this point. As the he is. team he's is the only scholarship quarterback left. Yep. And the team has been has been given to him. His it, like the 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 Avery Johnson era at Kansas State officially begins in the Pop Tarts Bowl in Orlando. And so I would understand why Kansas State fans might be concerned of the last scholarship quarterback you have on the roster potentially leaving for Texas A&M and you being left with uh, nothing 
heading into the off season. So we know that Klein is gone. At this point, help me understand. Because I, I, I do, but I, I need to hear it from a Kansas State person. Like, OCs leave, coaches leave. This is not new. It's not new to Kansas State fans. It's not new to any fans. But why is this exit hurt so bad? Well, I, I think part of it is, is uh, for, for <laughs> better or worse, and it's definitely worse, Kansas State has a long history of very good coaches who actually played and graduated from Kansas State uh, leaving. Uh, long Kruger. Um, you look at uh, Brent Venables uh, as part of the 1998 uh, staff exodus um, orchestrated by Bob Stoops. Um, you look at Brad Underwood leaving with Frank Martin and then some different flirtations of coming back, but never does. Um, and I think there is something um, and I don't, this is not like, oh, it's in the K-State DNA, but it, but it's happened so often, um, that it hurts. And when Colin Klein turned down Notre Dame last year, very publicly, um, was involved with Notre Dame, very publicly even talked about it after the fact and, and, and decided to stay. I think K-State fans thought, okay, he will eventually leave, but it will be for a head coaching job. I, I said that on my show. I said it on other shows. Um, publicly that I I thought, okay, he's turning down that there was other rumored stuff he was involved with. And then when his name was popping up with Penn state, and then they ultimately go with Andy Kotelanecki uh, from KU again, I think the two best offensive coordinators in the big 12 leaving the conference um, when, when he doesn't go to Penn state, you think to yourself, okay, like we had it right. He, he is going to stick around until it's his turn to be a head coach somewhere. And uh I, I think that's what hurts. So it catches you off guard. It's a guy on your ring of honor, um, a guy who, uh, you know, was a GA at K-State, went away to be the Iowa quarterback coach for one year, but then comes back. He, he's a co-offensive coordinator at the end of uh, Bill Snyder's uh, tenure. He takes a demotion to just be quarterbacks coach again uh, when Chris Kleiman comes up and then He's given the tryout versus LSU in the bowl game. And then he gets the job and it's so great. So, and he's married, his wife, K-State graduate, daughter of uh, K-State linebacker, the best linebacker in the history of K-State, Gary Spain. He's up on the ring of honor. He's a Chiefs Hall of Famer. Again, everything was so rooted. It was like, this was the the only the only knock against him. The only thing that doesn't make him the perfect K-Stater was he was born in Colorado instead of, uh, you know, being a Western Kansas kid. And keep in mind, he, he was recruited as a pro-style quarterback, but his first year playing under Bill Snyder, he actually was a wide receiver. Again, everything was perfect about the career <laughs> arc of Colin Klein. Everything. It, he was The only thing was he was born, you know, in Colorado instead of Western Kansas. Otherwise, you couldn't build a more perfect wildcat in a lab. So I'm sorry. It, I'm sorry. A, a Kansas State quarterback starting his career as a wide receiver is the well, most Kansas State fact I've ever heard in my life. Well, re recruited as a pro style <laughs> quarterback under Ron Prince, and then his freshman, his redshirt freshman year, he he played uh, wide receiver. Yes, but he but he recruit was recruited as a quarterback. I just want to make sure no, no, all I, the facts are. No, no, you're good. It's just it's that's the most that's the most the only thing more Kansas State is was a <clears throat> former wide receiver turned fourth fifth string walk on quarterback is now. The starter. No, I, I, to your point, I mean, look, his entire coaching career from 2014 to 2023, he was at Kansas State every year but one, as you mentioned, the quarterback coach for Northern Iowa in 2016. Otherwise, he's been a coach on the staff at Kansas State this for the last nearly decade. Yeah, and, and Heisman finalists, all that type of stuff. And then I, I think – so I think there is a, a level of being caught off guard when you thought everything was safe, and, and that's what hurts. And then the next level to it is uh, – you clear out the quarterback room and it is Avery Johnson, the guy that uh, was so synonymous with Colin Klein. That was a recruitment that Colin Klein was a big part of winning. You have no other quarterbacks, the highest rated quarterback commit you've had since Josh Freeman. Uh, one of the top Kansas uh, rated recruits in the history of the state of all the recruiting rankings. You, you know, you're going back to, Arthur Brown, Bryce Brown, Chris Harper, 
back in the early 2010s to find someone rated as high as Avery Johnson. And he chose K-State. And, and then the instant worry is, okay, where's he going to go? And then you have the quarterback that broke all the touchdown records that Christian McCaffrey had in Colorado. And Blake Barnett won the state championship on a broken ankle. Um, an absolute gamer, a guy who I think could be the perfect, hey, two, three years of Avery Johnson then two, three years of Blake Barnett. Um, he's a Colorado kid. That's another one so ingrained with Colin Klein. Um, so you're thinking it could all blow up. Now, all all indications, at least, you know, as of 10 a.m. on December 7th, are that Avery Johnson is going to stick around. That makes things feel a little bit better. Um, and, and I'm actually in the minority on uh, on this part, but I'm also a little annoyed, actually more than a little annoyed. I'm mad at Colin Klein because uh, part of what happened was it happened very fast. And it coincided with Gene Taylor, Chris Kleiman, Connor Riley, um, all in Las Vegas, as well as other uh, big time donors, other athletic administration folks, because Michael Bishop was getting inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. And Cooper Beebe was being honored by the College Football Hall of Fame for being a finalist in a bunch of awards. Um, and there was a award ceremony and all this type of stuff. This all unfolded as they were all at a black tie dinner gala event for those guys. And he is springing this on them saying, Hey, these are my demands. I want this autonomy. I want uh, the ability to hire and fire coaches. I want this raise. I want to be able to hire this many assistants, uh, 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 analysts, quality control, recruiting folks. He was trying to say, Hey, I, I want to basically be co-head coach with Chris Kleiman. Um, and they were getting ready to say yes to all of that. And then he was like, no, just kidding. I, I'm, I'm still going to leave. Um, so I think his mind was made up and he put K-State in a song and dance situation where he was hoping they would say no while they're a thousand miles away to make it easier for him to leave. Um, and, and reporting that I trust was saying, no, they, they were getting ready to give him everything he said he needed to stay. Uh, but then, uh, you know, 2 a.m., uh, local time in Kansas. Uh, so it would have been close to midnight in Las Vegas. Um, he, he's like, no, I, I am going to take that job. So uh, that part of it frustrates me. Um, I've caught a little bit of heat from K-State fans for for being mad at how that uh, has turned me off. Um, but you know what? I, I'm going to, you're putting me on the, on the video. So I'm going to say that part makes me mad. And then, of course, you referenced it earlier. I think we're going to be okay with current players. Um, but the rumors are he, he is trying to take K-State offensive staff with him. Um, so, again, that's his right. That's his job. That's their careers. If they want to do that, that is fine. I'm a little annoyed because, again, part of this little shadow campaign that happens everywhere. K-State's not unique in this. Um, I don't want K-State fans to hear this and think, oh, I'm, I'm saying K-State is bad all that no this happens everywhere but the shadow campaign is oh Colin Klein still wants to come back and be head coach one day oh Colin Klein still loves K-State he wants K-State to still be good oh blah 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 you can't say all that type of stuff if he is then actively trying to take you know two position coaches and the only offensive quality control guy that we have um just be the villain and be okay with it because that's what you're doing um, so I, I I get a little bit annoyed about the spin machine from some folks trying to say, oh, he's being classy with the way he's leaving uh, when I disagree with that. And again, K-State fans have been, you've seen it on Twitter. There's at least one person who said I was being too emotional on that point. A few people on message boards have, have, have taken my opinion on that and, and tried to uh, trash me for it. But you know what? Uh, that's my opinion. I'm not going to step away from that, and I, I don't think I'm wrong. Uh, <clears throat> rumor I saw was that Connor Riley could potentially become the new OC. He is the offensive line coach currently for Kansas State. Um, we'll keep an eye on that as that develops. So far, Avery Johnson's still here. Um, I would I, I, I would put the worry meter more of a post-bowl game than pre. I can't imagine that unless – like in my perception – he would play the bowl game, understanding the situation at Kansas State, the team that recruited him, and and then make a decision. But we'll have to keep an eye on that over the next few weeks and and in the beginning of January. I mean, look, I'm I, I hate this for Kansas State fans. 
it is a very tough 48 hours and it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of get past it. Um, success somewhere can do that. Um, things settling down would be helpful. Uh, a bowl win over NC state wouldn't hurt watching Chris Klein eat a human sized pop tart mascot would, would, uh, would certainly put a smile on everyone's face. So, uh, we will continue to follow this on the Central Podcast and here on YouTube. And and I would suggest everyone, whether you're a Big 12 fan or Kansas State fans or whatever, uh, make sure that you're listening to the Bosco Boys because I know Scott here will be following this the entire way, keeping you up to date. Um, the show still comes out like daily, five yep, days a I, week. I, I'm trying my best to get through December. We're going to see if it makes it all the way to January 1st. Um, but that's what I'm hoping for. Um, sadly, I've gotten enough news to kind of – <laughs> uh, keep it going so uh m- might as well and, and i will say this kind of fi- final part anyone watching or hearing I-, I i want to emphasize by saying um don't especially on the basketball side of things do not have the takeaway um from me coming on here saying that uh i know who to be mad at because i don't and i'm not telling you who to be mad at who to direct your frustrations to what i'm going to say is be open to hearing information as it comes out and understand that there is no positive side of burning it down for this instance. On the other side of this, um, there is not a better solution. The only better solution is if we can get all three branches, K-State basketball, K-State athletics, and the university pulling in the same direction. There's a way to rectify it. That is the only positive outcome. So I I don't want anyone to come away from it thinking, um, I know who to be mad at. I know who to blame because I don't. Um, But I'm trying my best to hold off until more information comes out and be part of the group that is hoping a solution as unlikely as that might be uh, that they can come out for it. So I just want to kind of leave that message to any K-State fans who might be finding this um, and aren't listening to Bosco's boys. So that, that's the only way things uh, can be a positive outcome for everyone. 